Hello and welcome to another episode of Thai Tuesdays. Today, we're going to go over dress shirts 101. Uh, we're going to cover everything about how to fit a good dress shirt to a feminine body. Uh, specifically, men's dress shirts uh, that women can wear and how to make it fit and make it look good. So, before we get into that, I do want to share that today in my hair, I actually don't have product. I have hair oil. And I'm using this Africa's Best Ultimate Herbal Oil. It's like uh, about $7 at uh, Walmart. And it will do miracles with your hair. Uh, if you have any kind of hair fall, use this stuff and it will certainly decrease. I, I vouch for that. All right, let's get into our topic. So let's start with buying a good uh, dress shirt. Like, I mean, you can you can use these uh, ideas for dress shirts or casual shirts. I mean, they're they're flexible. So, or Hawaiian shirts, if you like Hawaiian shirts. Uh, all right, buying a good dress shirt. So first of all, you know, you want to make sure that it's possibly, if you can, get a non-iron one. That way you can just basically put it in the dryer, take it out and put it on a, a hanger instead of like having it, having to iron it. Uh, there are these shirts called travel shirts. Uh, they're actually designed to be non-iron and they're designed to be um, less wrinkly. So try to see if you can find one of those. Uh, they work really good. Uh, I'm actually wearing one. I actually should be. So I have a trick and I'll share it with you guys. So uh, when you don't have time, take your dress shirt, wet it up with some water, sprinkle some water on it and put it in the dryer. That's all you need to do. And all the wrinkles are going to go away. Like put it in there for about, I'd say 10 minutes. 10, 10 minutes is good enough. And you're going to get a nice warm dress shirt with no wrinkles. So uh, try that out. I didn't do that today. I was lazy. Anyway, so the next thing is uh, slim fit versus regular fit. So there's regular fit in men's shirt and slim fit. Uh, slim fit is a little more... Uh, fitter and it looks better on an hourglass figure. I have an hourglass figure and it kind of looks a little better. Uh, and the regular looks a lot more boxier, uh, but it also depends on what, what you want to wear, what your preference is. So something to think about. Uh, so you could go slim fit or regular fit. And then the other thing is opaqueness. So this is a big one because then, you know, you might have to wear an undershirt or like, you know, try to like see. Uh, it shouldn't be too see-through essentially. And what you could do is you could put your hand behind the shirt and see how much of your hand you could see. Uh, that's a good way of defining uh, the opaqueness of a shirt. Uh, so it's, it's always good to uh, buy your first shirt at a shopping mall or something. That way you have an idea of how big that shirt is and it will save you some trouble later on. So that was a collar sizing. That's really important. Uh, collar sizing. So I would suggest go to a mall or something, get your collar sized. That way you know how, uh, what your collar size is. And then you could buy the same collar size over and over again. Uh, if you have uh, increased or decreased in weight, your collar size will change. So keep that in mind, especially if you're wearing ties or bow ties or anything like that. It's, it's fairly important so that you can button the top button. All right. So I think we've talked about all of those. Uh, women's dress shirts are freaking expensive. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this episode is because instead of spending 150 or whatever dollars, um, you can spend like 25, get a, good men, get a good men's shirt and then adjust it a little bit. All right, let's talk about shape. 
I think that's one of the most important things to talk about. And uh, usually on me, uh, men's dress shirts are actually, um, they make me look boxier. But what I do to uh, get over it is I wear women's blazers. Because if you realize women's dress shirt collars are not that stiff. But women's blazers are pretty much like men's blazers, but they have a more hourglass figure. So that actually covers up the sleaziness of my dress shirt. And um, it makes me look a little better instead of more boxier. So that might be something to look at is getting a good blazer. And I highly suggest spending more on the blazers because... Um, First of all, they're long lasting, so you're gonna have that for a while. Second of all, it's a good investment. So you're, you're spending your money right, because if you think about it, you could always wear jeans or black pants, or you know, you could, you could accessorize so easily with a blazer. Like even you can wear a t-shirt underneath. And it, it's such a good investment to have. So if you have uh, a little bit to spend, spend it on a good blazer. Um, so certainly that, that is definitely an investment. And then let's talk about tailors. I think a lot of people are intimidated by tailors. Uh, tailors can be your best friend. And I actually went out and did a little bit of a study, talked to a few people and putting a few pleats in a men's shirts would cost less than 10 bucks. So if you have a few shirts, uh, take them to the tailor, uh, get them refitted and uh, it's, it's money well spent, for sure. So uh, don't be afraid of the tailor. Uh, plus, I mean, there's not a lot of people that use tailors, so you're essentially helping out a local business. So think about it in that way too. So um, tailors, we've talked about shape. All right, let's talk about washing the shirts. So I have a trick on that. Um, I do wear a lot of white shirts, as you've noticed. Uh, they're my favorite. And uh, I have a lot of marks on them too, depending on what I'm doing. So one thing you can invest in is one of these. If you have a white shirt on or anything like really on, uh, these are super useful. It's a tie to go stain removing pen, about $10. Uh, keep it around in your car or anywhere i mean if you carry a bag or a purse or whatever you always have one in there and it's super useful all right so next we're gonna go over how to wash them especially white shirts so a tip for that is instead of washing them in your washer and putting the bleach in there the residence time inside the washer is not as long so you could actually plug a sink in your house, put your all your white shirts in, two or three, how many, and put the bleach in there and put some water in there. So leave it for uh, two hours, three hours, and uh, you know, go and check, see if they've cleaned up. Uh, you know, you might have to rub a few spots here and there. Uh, like the benefit of doing that is that you would have clean shirts, number one. Number two, your sink's also gonna be clean. So it's, it's uh, two birds with one shot. Uh, very useful and you know, you can always like leave it in longer and that way you don't waste as much bleach either. So instead you can do that. And then you could have a regular wash, just wash it with water, put it in the regular wash and you know, dry it up. So that is fairly useful. So then um, we can also, uh, so another thing I've noticed is like for anyone who is more busty, uh, these um, buttons are like, you know, they kind of stretch. And uh, so one of the ways uh, to deal with that is using a safety pin, but a safety pin, you'll always see that silver point. It's not that uh, obvious, but you know, if you want to go a gear up, you can use baby safety pins because they have a safety lock on them. So they're not going to open and hurt you. Another thing you can do is get double sided tape and the double sided tape is going to keep it in place, but you'd have to replace it every time. 
The fourth thing you could do is take one of those snap buttons. Uh, they're like those small round buttons. Uh, they have a male and female part and just stitch them onto your dress shirt where you think that you're gonna have that stretch. And um, that is permanent. It looks great. I think uh, New York and company has a few shirts that all they already do that in, those uh, stretch shirts. So um, fairly useful thing to do. All right, let's talk collars because the reason we're having this whole conversation is women's dress shirts don't have good collars. So let's let's talk about how to make sure your collar is on point. So there are these things called collar stiffeners. They actually go underneath here. I am not wearing any, but there's like a sli slip inside here and it looks like a little pointed uh, piece of plastic. Uh, and they just go in there and keep your collar stiff. So for that, you could actually make your own out of cardboard because I tend to lose my collar stiffeners. I forget to take them out before laundry. So you can actually make your own. Uh, another thing I noticed is like my masks had this thing in there and I throw away the mask and I keep it. it, it keep, I'm keeping these now so that I could use these as collar stiffeners. Uh, so that way I don't have to spend on collar stiffeners, but if you want to get a box, it's about seven bucks on Amazon. Then we talk about collar supports. So there's also these things called collar supports. They're like these plastic rings that go around your collar and they keep your collar up. So those are like seven bucks for two. Uh, again, you can find that on Amazon. It, it really depends. I didn't know that those even existed, but if you're looking into something, uh, like that. You can certainly look at uh, collar support sticks. Uh, then we have collar stays, which are uh, magnetic. So collar stays, you put the collar, it's like a collar stiffener, but metallic, non-metallic, but it also has like a magnet that you put underneath the collar to hold the collar up. Uh, that actually is very useful when you're wearing a collar without, um, even with a blazer, or but without a, a bow tie or a necktie, and it will keep your collar up. So that's fairly useful. They're a little more expensive. They're like uh, about 15 bucks, 8 to 15 bucks, depending on how many pairs you get. Then we have fake collars. Now this is a trick I learned. Um, if you're wearing a sweater, instead of wearing a full dress shirt, you can actually just buy a fake collar and put it under your uh, sweater. So that way you don't have the wrinkly uh, look underneath your uh, sweater. So you can certainly buy some of those. Those are like 17 bucks for a pair of set of three, three different colors. And you can also get those in not only collars, like fake collars, but also turtlenecks. So uh, if you're wearing something that you know is like already uh, buttoned up or sewn together or sweaters, you could, you could use those. And then you don't have to worry about a dress shirt at all. So I thought that was pretty cool. Let's talk sleeves. Sleeves, um, so the rule of thumb for sleeves is that your sleeve shouldn't be going further than between your uh, wrist and your thumb. So it's like that's the maximum it should go. And um, so you should like button depending on where you want your uh, sleeve to go. Usually like, you know, I mean, I can, I have a smaller wrist so I can button the, the smaller one too but i like it a little loose uh but that's kind of the rule of thumb for sleeves i've noticed that you know you could get like the right size of shirt but then you have a problem with longer sleeves historically men's shirts only came in one size so they used to call uh use this thing called an arm garter and uh, especially the farming folks because they would have to make sure that they're uh uh, their sleeves were protected and didn't get dirty and soiled, they would actually pull it further back and they would use an arm garter, which is essentially just like, 
you can get it in leather, silk, or uh, elastic. And they're basically just like these rings that go around your arm and they hold your sleeve in place. And I thought that was pretty cool. If you're especially going for a more retro look, they will look great too. Uh, so certainly look into those. Uh, if you have uh, shorter arms and your sleeves are normally longer, you can, you can get those arm garters and look on point. Um, and your sleeves will fit better. Uh, another thing when you're talking about sleeves is like you could change the button based on if you're wearing a big watch or something. So uh, that would certainly affect the fit uh, of the sleeve. So so I think I've covered everything that I got here. Um, if you have any questions or more ideas, uh, certainly leave them in the comments below. It's a for longer video, but I think that there's a lot of good information. I, I think I'm going to pick out another piece of clothing next time and just do something similar to this. But certainly, I think this is one of the best videos I've done so far for the group. Um, always open to your input and have a wonderful week.